Welcome to 68 Shining Moments presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Today, we catch up with former NC State guard Derek Wittenberg about the shot, or maybe the pass, that helped NC State win the national title and beat Houston back in 1983. All right, now pleased to be joined uh, by one of the heroes of the 1983 uh, NCAA champion NC State Wolfpack, Derek Wittenberg. And uh, Derek, how you doing? I'm doing terrific, and uh, it's almost March Madness time, so I'm excited and ready to go. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, all right, let's go back to that year, that, that 83 year, and everybody always wants to talk about the past, the shot, Jimmy V running around, all that stuff. But I, I want to I flip back a little bit um, to early on in the conference season, and you're the leading scorer in this team, uh, the best scorer in the team, and you break your foot. I think it was the first game of the ACC slate uh, and missed the next 17 games. When, when that happened, what was the kind of mood around the team? And even for you, whether you thought you'd even get back for the NCAA tournament. What an iconic game. We played against Ralph Sampson, uh, arguably one of the best players I've ever played in ACC and in college basketball. We hadn't beaten them in seven straight tries. And as our senior year, and national televised game, we were we got off to a great start and up 14 points, and I break my foot. And I uh, really don't know if I'm going to be able to come back in the game. And I break my foot, and uh, the doctor told me at halftime, you, you can't go back out. And I don't go back out. And the move was kind of somber because this is the last time we can make a run, Jeff. We – we uh, Senior year, North Carolina had won it last year in 82 uh, with Michael Jordan and that crew. And uh, so it was our time. And uh, the team was really down at first. Valvano was disappointed. The team took a little dive, but then the team recovered. And uh, they got a little winning streak together. And then finally I was coming back. So, uh, you know, things were looking a little bright, but it was the, the mood at the time when I got hurt. It was really a bad time for that season for our guys and for coach and, and even for myself. Well, you lost, I think, 10 games, right? You lost 10 games. The tournament expanded from 48 to 52. So you're probably feeling a little better, like maybe we can still get in. But you're going to the ACC tournament with some pressure on you to try to win this thing to make sure that you're in the NCAA tournament, right? Absolutely. 16 and 10 uh, going into the ACC tournament. I think the game that nobody talks about that really kicked us off is when we scored 124 points against uh, Wake Forest senior day at home. And it really gave us a lot of confidence. And then going into the tournament, we had to play Wake Forest again. And so, but we went into the tournament thinking that we have to win the tournament. I mean, if we don't win the tournament, we have no shot to get in at 16 and 10 and tied for fourth place at the time. And, uh, so uh, we went in, you know, Valvano's favorite slogan, you know, survive in advance one game at a time and won a uh, close game with uh, Wake Forest at the end and then uh, played a double overtime game against Dean Smith and Michael Jordan down six in that uh, double overtime game and coming back to win against a North Carolina team who were the defending champs and then going to play uh, another time against the great Ralph Sampson who, mind you, we haven't beat in eight straight times. And this is the biggest game, the ACC tournament. And what a game it was. Uh, Ralph Sampson, uh, Virginia started off great in that game in the ACC championship. And Val Vano said, that is enough. I'm tired of Ralph, watching Ralph dunk on my whole team. And he implemented not a triangle and two, it was a two-on-one and a three-man zone. That was the defense. <laughs> and it worked. No, and it worked because nobody said, it's incredible. They have two men on Ralph, and they're essentially telling the other four guys, go ahead and shoot because we're not letting you throw this ball into Ralph. <laughs> he was, and so, that, and that's he was a, so dominant, wasn't he, Derek? A tremendous player. He could shoot from the outside. He had jump hooks. He could shoot the three-ball. He blocked shots and rebound. What a dominant player. I never thought that Ralph got his just due because he didn't win, uh, they would say, the big one, right? He never won the ACC championship. 
He never went to the Final Four. But Ralph, in terms of the numbers and what he did for college basketball in the ACC and for the University of Virginia was was unbelievable. I have so much respect for him. And, and like I told everybody, I said, I appreciate Ralph letting us have those two wins. We can give him the other eight, but I like the two that we gave. <laughs> they were big ones. They were, <laughs> listen, so you win that game against Virginia. I mean, it must have been mayhem because, again, from where you guys had come from, to now not even have to sweat it out to get in the NCAA tournament. What what was it like? You remember in the locker room after that game? Uh, unbelievable celebration. I, I'm telling you what, as special as my saying, we talked about it, we dreamed about it, but it's nothing more special about winning a ACC title. Wow, that was huge, man. And us going to term. I think we were so, so on a high, we was numb. And it was like, yeah, we won ACC tournament, but that's great. Oh, we have to go play in the NCAA. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right. like so we we selling celebrating so much. Like, oh wait a minute, we got to go to the, we got to go to the NCAA tournament. And then they surprised and said, okay, great, you beat the great Ralph Sampson. Uh, you did so well. We're gonna ship you out west <laughs> with Ralph with Ralph again w with Ralph. I said, oh my God, with Ralph. <laughs> yeah, they sent you that was to what, Cor Corvallis. You got Virginia. Yes. You got UNLV and you got UCLA. I think UCLA was the two and UNLV yes. was the three. And you're yes. like, what? When you see those those brackets, are you like, do we have a chance? Are we playing with house money? Do we have a chance? What, what are you thinking at that point? Well, I think if you look at from a coach's perspective and Valvano and the staff and us, we were kids back then, right? So we were just excited that we were one game at a time. Uh, Valvano had etched that in our minds that, we didn't look at the brackets. We looked at that one game, that game Pepperdine, right? And we got to win that game. That's what survive in advance is. Yeah. Win that one game, and that was our focus. Go to the next game, UNLV, great team, number two in the country at the time, Sid Green, yeah. uh, the late Jerry Tarkanian, great. We have to prepare for them. But mind you, our confidence is at an all-time high. We just beat Ralph Sampson, Michael Jordan, the best conference in the country, ACC. We didn't fear anybody. We respected everybody, yeah. but we didn't fear anybody. And so our preparation, following the leadership of our battle, one game at a time, one team at a time. So that was our focus going forward. And we snipped UNLV by one point. Great last second shot by Thurl Bailey there. And then we were on, we didn't know who we were going to play next. You know, like, yeah, we're so happy when right. we, we, we yeah. going to Ogden, Utah. Where is that? Where's Ogden, Utah? Where, <laughs> what, what the world are we going? You know, going to Ogden, Utah and didn't go back home, Jeff. We didn't go back home to Raleigh. You we just straight. left. We, we went straight from Corvallis straight to Utah. Uh, Why go got, back all the way to North Carolina, right? Just you, you got to see beautiful straight. Utah. You got to see yeah. more of, of, of Ogden, Utah, and Weber State, right? Hey, just go straight, baby. Let's go straight there. And we went there, and and uh, we did, we we thought we was going to probably play UCLA, right? And then they get upset by Utah, and so that was a game that we handled pretty well. But then you see that Boston College Virginia game. So, oh my goodness, Boston College. Please upset Virginia. We don't want to see Ralph again. And lo and behold, we see Ralph again. I said, oh, my goodness. Not Ralph again. He's going to be mad this time. You had a big <laughs> game, but you had a huge game in that one, didn't you? I mean, Ralph was good. He was always good. But you had a big game, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, Ralph, I mentioned that a couple of times. Ralph, I did outscore him that game. It ain't many games, but I, I outscored him. Actually, I ended up being one of the leading scorers in the history of the tournament. But – uh Yes, we 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 kind of at the end we did something that was very well. I would say Valvano did, you know, tie score, yeah, you know, right at the end, and he elected to foul Othell Wilson to put him on the line. Like, wow, that's <laughs> that's unconventional, right? You you foul a guy with a tie score to put him on the line. What if he makes two? You know, so he makes one, and we come down and. I, I drive to the basket, uh, dish it to Lorenzo, and Lorenzo's got to make two. And Lorenzo makes the two, and we end up closing it out to the end. And uh, what 
what an, another upset beating Virginia to go to the final four. So now you're the you're the cardiac kids or whatever they were calling you back then because every game is is exciting. I mean, again, we didn't talk about it, but double overtime against Pepperdine. The Virginia game comes down to the end. Um, you know, UNLV a one point game. Now you get Georgia and, and Vern Fleming's a hell of a guard, uh, a hell of a guard here. But you get Georgia, you're going to the Final Four. Any great stories or anything heading to the Final Four? You went home in between this time, didn't you? Went home. The best story I can ever tell you is that we get back home before we go to the Final Four. And we get back and we practice in Reynolds Coliseum. And we get in the Coliseum and there's 5,000 people here at our practice. And I'm looking at V. I said, I said, Coach, I said, we, uh, what, what are these people doing here? And V just looked at me and put his arms around me and said, just enjoy it. Just enjoy the moment. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I said, he said, listen, we can't kick them out. They're excited. Everybody's excited. We go into the final four. And he said, just enjoy. But I was a focus driven guy. Our team was. And to me, that was about our preparation, right? We, we hear and we want to go to the final four. So we used to practice with a great amount of focus. We didn't have fans running around, but Valvano had so much perspective about how to, handle such situations like that yeah. and pushing man, the right buttons you, Derek push, yes, pushing the right yes. buttons with people oh man let me tell you something the way his way with people is it, it's hard to describe yeah. the man was charismatic a dynamic personality that people met him for the first time and thought they knew him for the, their whole life I yeah. mean that's what kind of impact that but more importantly we had three things Jeff that every company and every team that people are looking for. We had trust. We trusted our coach. Yeah. We had truth. He always tells us the truth. And we had transparency. That means he, he laid everything out. We knew our roles. We understand the value. We understand. But more importantly, he cared for us as people. And that was what's most powerful about Valvano is that he was – he had tr- – he was more than a coach. He was a great leader. Yeah, yeah. And we were just, we was fortunate enough to have a guy like him. It's that time of the year again, folks. Conference tournaments are tipping off. Bubble teams making their final push for a bid while the best teams in the country are gearing up for a deep run. Auto bids will be punched. Slippers will be fit. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook, are putting my listeners at the center of the action. If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. Download the app now. Use that promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Again, FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on them to win, and cash out a whopping $256 when they do. There's no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge on display than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, that's field, the code, field68. Again, field68 to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, you must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com. For details, gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So you get past Vern in, in Georgia, and now you got you got Houston. You got, you know, five slam a You got Hakeem, and you got Clyde the Glide. Like, two future Hall of Famers, um, two elite-level players. I don't know how many people gave you much of a shot in this one other than you guys in the locker room, your families, and, and Jimmy V. Probably not many. Well, I will give you another story. It's going to be in my book, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, Jeff. There was one coach in the Final Four in the hotel. I think it was a Western in Albuquerque. I just got this story from a friend of mine. There was a coach named Will Jones, the late Will Jones, that won the national championship at UDC in Washington, D.C. They said he was in the lobby and had a few drinks. He was in the lobby, the championship, the day before the championship game. 
because he coached Sydney and I in AAU back in D.C. And he said, those two little guards and Thurl Bailey, we, I'm telling you, everybody that the NC State and the guys from D.C. are going to whoop Houston. He's the only coach, the late Will Jones, that said that NC State can win. He's the only coach in the history of the NCAA. I can tell you that story right now. The first time I've ever told it That's great. that Will Jones thought we could win that game. Uh, He's the only guy uh, in us, our team and Will Jones. <laughs> so what, was there any, you know, you go out there for this game and a, again, like Ralph and Akeem were like two of the greatest, period, the, the greatest. W did you walk on that court still feeling like, hey, we got this one? Or, or did it take a little while before you knew you could play with them and beat them? Jeff, we were so focused that, like I said, we – we wasn't in awe of anybody. We respected every team we played against. And, and we thought that, you know, we played against Ralph Sampson. We played against North Carolina, two great teams, played in a great conference. So we, we, we understood the competition. But, Jeff, there's one guy that makes you go, ooh. <laughs> Elijah Wan was in a, it was in a different space. You didn't want to look over there because when we saw that Louisville game and Houston game, that semifinals game, he was the guy you said, uh oh, he's a problem. <laughs> he's the real deal. Uh, how do we deal with him? He can block shots, he can score, he can rebound. I mean, what do we do with this guy? This guy was an intimidating force like Ralph. But, you know, he was different. And so that was the guy that we was concerned about. But our game was from the outside anywhere with Thurl really doing a nice job around the back. And, look, we had size now. People forget, Jeff. Right. You got Thurl at 6'11", Cozell at 6'11", yeah. Renzo at 6'8", and then the two little fire plugs, you know, me and Sidney. So we had a pretty good size team. Yeah, yeah. So we wasn't at all, but Elijah one was – we never played any trick defenses against Ralph. We were more concerned with Michael Young because he's such a great uh, scorer and left-handed kid. They really shoot it. So we want we wanted to make sure that we keep our eyes on him. We did play a little boxing one on him at one time, but but Elijah one was the guy we had to really focus on. Well, you, I mean, you gave him his. He, he, he earned his. It's not like he did much, but you did do a great job against Clyde. And that really enabled you guys to to have a good chance at the end of the game uh, when obviously the play that everybody remembers. Uh, you've probably gone through it a million times at this point. Take me through it. Uh, Thurl, you know, uh, throws a pass that's not the greatest pass in the world. Somehow, somehow you get the ball and you jack up whatever you could at that point, and uh, then all hell broke loose. Well, it starts off with the timeout, Jeff. So we get a timeout. It's tie score. Everybody's excited. We're going to run the five play, right? Thurl off the double screen on the other side to the left side of the baseline. I'm going to be having the floor cleared on the right for one-on-one. -on -one. That's the play. That's what we're going to run. We get out there, and then the one-three-one trap. And it's like one of those deals like, you didn't hey, expect that. You, didn't, you didn't tell us they're going to be in a one-three-one <laughs> trap. So it didn't one-three-one trap. So you know, you, you pushing the ball around, we pass it around. One thing that's in our head is that we know we want to take the last shot. We don't know when, but we're going to take the last shot. So as we pass this around, there's kind of awareness and a clock in your head. So when the ball finally got to Thurl in the corner, he couldn't pass it to Sidney, who was right down the baseline. So he saw me, so he throws this cross-court pass. I'm going like, oh, my goodness, here it is cross court pass they're going to steal it and luckily i reach for it and in my head I, I i thought i knew the time was going to be short i didn't i know i didn't have time to look up at the clock so i just said i gotta make a play and i caught it luckily that benny Anders didn't steal it i caught it with two hands and in one motion i went up nice pass to lorenzo charles <laughs> Bam, slam for the national championship, and then we go crazy. 
you know, and the story tells you that Val Vano was running around looking for somebody to hug. But the actual story, Jeff, is that after the first game in the ACC tournament, I went up, I don't know why I did it, I went up after the game and started hugging V and said, we want another one for you. I don't know why I did it. I just did it for nine straight games. Really? After every game, I gave V a hug. And so when you saw him at the end looking for somebody to hug, yeah. he was looking for me. And I went and hugged my parents because my parents in the section. So I went over and, uh, and went to the parents section. I couldn't find my dad and I found my mom and I hugged her. Then I went and joined the pal and Val, but V saw me, he said, where were you? I was looking for you. I said, well, I'm going to give you a hug right now. <laughs> and so that's the moral of the hug story. That's a story about me and Jimmy Valvano hugging for nine straight games. So when you let the ball go, what are you thinking at that point? Are you thinking, hey, you know what? We're headed to overtime? You know, basketball is a reaction game and not a thinking game. It's split seconds, right? And everybody asks you that, but in those split seconds, Jeff, there's no thought, right? There's reaction. And so everybody said, well, I didn't catch the ball and go like, well, let me see. Uh, it's going to be overtime. You know, you don't have time to think. You it's your reactions. Yeah. So we reaction. And luckily it had the sixth sense, right? Because of preparation that you take it one motion and you make a play. Yeah. So to ask your question, no thought process. It was a reaction. And I, I, I understood what the time and score was yeah. and what we needed to do. And, and sometimes you got to have a little, be a little lucky. The play worked well, out for us. In that way, honestly, you shoot it like that. You know they're not going to have a shot to win the game. So you might as well just throw it up at the basket and whatever happens, happens. There's no way, at worst case scenario, you're going overtime. Well, Jeff, and this is another thing. This is about preparation. And obviously, I had a great high school coach, late Morgan Wooten, yeah. that taught so much about basketball and Valvano. A lot of coaches don't work on time and score. And so when you work on that, you understand in your mind and it, it, that these situations – you got you have an awareness about this situation, and so it helps your instinct, right? Yep. It it helps this last second decision that you got to make right away, and you know what you're going to do. So, thanks to the preparation and the no hesitation, I gave us an opportunity to win the game. Last question: the the coolest thing that came out of that. Uh, national title uh, victory was what? Coolest story, something that you'll just always remember, something crazy? You know, the coolest story I, I, I would I would say about winning the national championship, uh, that is something that not a lot of people talk about. You know, when Phil Spence came in that locker room, who won the championship in 1974 with a great team with David Thompson, you know, the, the, when Phil walked in that room, that I knew that the spirit was going to be with us because we actually, Valvano had stopped the prep talk. And when Phil Spence came in that room and said, this is our time, we're going to win this thing, that was about NC State history. That was about getting the, the, the pioneers, the guys who, who set the tone, the 7014. When Phil Spence came in that locker room, I, I felt like we we going to win this thing because he was our good luck charm. He was the guy that showed us the way. And, and, and I thought that, you know what, this is NC State basketball. And that's what's special about the history of your school. You know, it, to embrace your history to is enhance your destiny. And thank God for the 74 team that paved the way because without David Thompson and the 7014 and Norm Sloan, there would never have been a 1983 team in Jim Valbano. Well, listen, we appreciate it, Derek. Uh, 1983 uh, national champions, one of the greatest teams, uh, one of the coolest stories, one of the best plays uh, ever in NCAA tournament history. So we appreciate you taking a few. Well, thank you, Jeff. And uh, we've had a long relationship and I, I appreciate what you do and uh, keep doing what you do. And uh, 
Thank man, you. God bless you, man. And, and listen, let's enjoy life and enjoy the journey.